Okay, welcome back. You're listening to the second hour of the weekend edition of the Coraline Economics Report. We're all over here. The whole family is over here in uh, Spokane, Washington at the Silver Summit having a ball. The entire show is being uh, originated from here. I'm chatting right now with Roger Wiegand. You guys all know who Trader Raj is. And Kevin Hudak. Kevin is going to join me for the next couple of segments. In this particular segment, though, we're going to talk a little bit about what uh, the psychology of investors, for lack of better terms. Now, we're recording this uh, on Thursday. Thursday afternoon, the markets have closed. Dow Jones Industrial Average finished up 26 points today. Big deal. NASDAQ finished up 4.42. Again, I'd have to say that's kind of a big deal, uh, but not really. Silver was up a bit today, uh, and gold was up slightly at the end of the day. It was up about nine bucks. What are investors thinking about, Kevin? Uh, Thank you, Al. Uh, The two biggest things on their minds are the election coming up for the uh, president. Um, A lot of people are still undecided. A lot of people are concerned about which way the country is going to go either way. And the other thing that's on their mind is no matter which way the presidential election goes, they're very, very concerned about the fiscal cliff. And in the last four weeks, uh, that's become more front and center and the politics that go with it. And normally people really don't care about those kind of things, except they're talking about a 5 percent change in the GDP, which would take us into negative range and what effects that would have on the Dow, the S&P, and the resource stocks and everything else with it, because so much of uh, the Dow is bought on margin. Addressing the question on the fiscal cliff, Kevin, uh, I saw the other day in the news that a group of senators, just a handful, like six or eight senators, senior senators, were meeting in a quiet meeting in Virginia to try to come to a compromise solution to answer the fiscal cliff situation, which is coming in January 1st. There's been talk of that situation being uh, from the administration, that taxes would be increased on people earning more than 250000 and those earning less than that amount would not be taxed at all. It would be my speculation that the, the tax on the 250 group and up would be a new tax and it would be more aggressive But in addition to that, I would think that what they intend to do is deny any taxes below $250,000, but rather go ahead and put some in anyway in dribs and drabs in small amounts that would seemingly not amount to a much, but collectively they could amount to a great deal. Uh, Those are all very possible. The biggest concern my clients are telling me is the unknown. They don't know how to uh, act or react to what's going on. And so most of them, from a financial point of view, are waiting for the election to go through and then try to get a feel what Congress may or may not do with the five or six weeks they have left before they can do something about the fiscal cliff. You know, Kev, the million-dollar question in my mind right now is would, would either candidate really make a difference now in terms of the economy? Now, my personal feeling, and I've said this numerous times, is that I I believe the president has an agenda uh, that is certainly towards big government, it's towards an entitlement mentality, et cetera. Socialism, I think, is an easy way to put it. And and that's something because I haven't received a paycheck from anybody uh, other than than my own company for about 40 years, 35 years. Uh, That's something that I personally don't believe in. I I think that with, with Romney, I think there's a shot that we may get back to perhaps a little more of a capitalistic society. Under, under Obama, I don't think it's going to happen. Any comments on that? Th- those views are probably accurate. The problem we've got is by the, when whoever gets elected, if Romney does get elected in November, we've got uh, roughly, what, eight weeks before he becomes uh, president, and we have a president currently who has been using the executive order forum to push things through and going right around Congress. So it's a question of where the agendas want to go and uh, how far they can press them without being unwound by a new president. And so basically what we're dealing with are unknowns, and that's what's got people nervous. But the thing that I really have to wonder about is, is what's the point 
of, of pushing through actions via executive orders uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a less than two month period? What's the point of doing that? If we have a lame duck president and he wants to finish his agenda as much as he can, he, uh, he can put those through. The problem he has is they can be counter, uh, they're reprimanded by the new president by doing other executive orders. So it's, it's not tit for tat, but it's like they're trying to finish certain blocks of legislation without legislation. And that's basically what the executive orders are doing. I totally agree with what Kevin's saying. And I, I think that whether uh, Obama is reelected or he's not, either way, I think he's going to be writing a whole flurry of those executive orders uh, after the election and before uh, January 1st. I think that's just what he plans to do. And some of the ideas that have been tossed about are very interesting indeed. We saw one idea that said that the UN wanted to tax the internet. We saw another idea that said the UN wanted to impose uh, gun control throughout the world generally, including the US. And they also had some other ideas for taxes. So where these things go, it's gonna to prove to be very interesting. It is gonna to prove to be very interesting.